Joachim Schlöffel, Inner Space Explorers. One of my patrons asked me to make a video about uh, thermal protection during diving and uh, the reason for that was that I either I wrote in a manual or said uh, somewhere in a video that I do not use dry, um, wetsuits thicker than five millimeters and he wanted to know why and, and what's the disadvantage of thicker ones and so on and so on. So here we go. I have personally for myself, um, I figured out my, my terminal borderline is 16 degrees Celsius. So everything below, I need, I need proper protection, which for me means a dry suit and dry gloves. Everything above 16, I'm happy to do in a wetsuit. I mean, obviously not technical dives or, I mean, we, we all know that if I do a trimix dive, no matter what the temperature is, I normally use a dry suit also because of additional lift and um, probably um, thermal issues regarding the helium and so on and so on and so on. So, but talking recreational diving, um, if it's warmer than 16, I can do it in a five millimeter suit. But five millimeter suit for me means one of those um, apnea skin diving suits that you probably have seen videos from me with this camouflage thing. So it's not about the camouflage, it's about the, the, the fact is that they, they come like this uh, or in black and I hate black suits, especially, especially on videos and photos. I mean, black diver with black gloves handling some black equipment in front of black water. So guess what you see in the end. So that's why I wanted a little bit of color and that's why I came up with this camouflage. But um, if you look at these suits, they don't have any zippers. They have an attached hood. Um, they have um, this, um, this pure neoprene on the seals, also on the ankles and on the wrists. And um, the, the trousers are pretty high, so they, they, they go up to the breast. And the upper like 40 centimeters are older, this um, open cell neoprene and then this um, this kind of hoodie that you have on top has this on the inner part as well. So the isolation of these five millimeter suits is by far better than most normal seven meters millimeter suits because there's almost no water exchange. At the same time, they are super flexible. It's usually Yamamoto neoprene, so the the outer liner is as flexible as the neoprene or the other way the neoprene is as flexible as the outer liner whilst with some of the thicker suits especially with different types of neoprene the neoprene is not as flexible as that liner and you can see these two layers separate and uh, and create uh, tears and i mean the, these suits usually break pretty pretty soon and as people want comfort and everything needs to be easy and simple unfortunately in all of this diving related things, including the training. Um, yeah, you have suddenly a zipper here, or a zipper here, on the ankles, and God knows where, and then there's a lot of water exchange. So the other thing is, if you dive a seven or even nine millimeter suit, the movability becomes really hard, especially when you look at the joints, when you, when you bend your arm, um, you have wrinkles here, and um, you look a little bit, like a penguin it's 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 just not very practical so why would I switch from my five millimeter wetsuit to a thick neoprene wetsuit or semi dry wetsuit um, creating discomfort and lack of movability and still not get the isolation I'm looking for when I can use dry suit so my movability and comfort in the dry suit is superior um, if it fits. I can adjust to the situation um, if I use a tri limit dry suit. I mean, the dry suit doesn't give any isolation whatsoever. So um, it's my undergarment that in the end uh, makes the difference. And then I can combine it with my dry gloves. So again, personal thing for me, I froze my hands pretty, pretty bad when I was a teenager. So if I get in real cold, cold water with my hands, my anger, my joints start to swell and break open. This is pretty uncomfortable. So it's important for me to have warm hands. So taking, you're talking about gloves, when I dive the five millimeter suit, I have these cut off um, 
tropical gloves or, or biker gloves or weightlifting gloves, something like that. So I have the, the maximum performance um, with the fingers because I can feel everything, may it be camera stuff or lines or whatever. But at the same time, I have cut protection in my palms. So if, I, if I'm going down a chain or work with a rope or whatever, and I have small shells or muscles or whatever on it, and um, and I don't read, uh, need any, any real thermal protection on my hands. If it gets colder, I want proper protection, but same thing if I use thick neoprene mitts. First of all, there's still water going in. I still don't have the isolation I want. Or they have to be like super tight. When you remember, there was, um, was a couple of years ago when, when there's all this DIR hardcore, what, how, how has things to be done? Um, people were like cutting um, these these seals and gluing them tighter and then they needed some special jelly to go in there it was a disaster um, so in the end you still have thick mitts and uh, the feel you have in your fingers is, is by far not as good as it could be or it should be so if I have proper dry gloves with a certain texture on the outside so they're like really grippy and you make the you um, realize that when you work with your bolt snaps if I have, have thick neoprene mitts it gets a little bit um, slicky so I sometimes these things just slip out of my hands if I have proper dry gloves I have a really good grip and then again I mean it depends on what you put underneath and the brand of, of, uh, of dry gloves you use if you have the, this cheap chemical stuff usually the fingers are longer than your fingers so you have these two centimeters of material in front of your fingertips which then gets in the bolt snaps and stuff like that so you have to shop around a little bit for something that really fits your hands and then find some proper under liners but then you're set and done so the rule of thumb is as thin as it can be and as thick as you need it and that goes for the suit as well for the for the gloves I always dive with a hood um, the, the biggest uh, heat loss is always um, through your head because the blood vessels are really um, not protected by any layers of fat or whatever in my case not even by hair so um, the hood is an essential part of your thermal protection and you will never see me in a shorty or something like that so I always want my body to be covered I've seen a couple of really nasty things with, uh, with jellyfish and um, so this uh, pretty popular thing in some of the warmer regions like a shorty and a t-shirt or bathing shorts and a t-shirt is something I cannot recommend at all just protect your body from whatever's out there and uh, it, it doesn't have to be your fault it's not about the careless diver I mean there's things drifting around and um, up lines down lines uh, especially the permanent ones there's small shells and muscles that sit there permanently and you can cut yourself like really bad so you want to want to have your skin protected all right I hope that gave a, a bit of an idea of uh, this five seven whatever millimeter thing and um, yeah, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. Uh, check out our Patreon page. It would be awesome if you become part of that, if you're not so far. And um, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.